morning, morning to Joshua. And I see a lot of um of of names here that I do recognize. But you know, I think it would be remiss of me if I don't state that, you know, on behalf of Mr. Hector Negron, our managing director, you know, we 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 can't stress it enough how grateful we are that you have chosen to spend the time with us. And we know that your time is precious and we do appreciate it. And um, we're gonna dive in right away and we're, we're gonna have a little fun. Um, so without any further ado, I'm just going to share my screen so that we can just do a quick recap to position ourselves and see where we are. So, I always like starting with this screen because we are we are developing our project as we move on um, to 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 presenting our data in uh, um, in 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 a business analytics type um, presentation. You may remember we said that there are many stages as we're looking at the Jet Analytics product. Um, the first stage, which is managed by the JET data managers, can be seen on the left portion of our screen here of this slide. And it's the responsibility of the JET data manager to integrate and pull data from your various data sources. Um, and as you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be only a Microsoft SQL data source. Um, you know, it, it can be any type of what is called ODBC compliant data source, where ODBC, the acronym means object database connectivity. So once you're able to connect to this kind, any kind of database source, so, you know, so um, PostgreSQL, Oracle, uh, MySQL, etc., and even something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet and a text, um, a text file. So you're able to bring in all this data because there's a possibility that you might want to, to, to present your data in, in more than just the data from um, your production environment, but maybe you might want to position your data um, with industry best practice or maybe industry um, wide data or if not even industry-wide data, even data on a more global basis. So therefore you're able to position your, co um, your company and look at its performance within the context or within a wider context. So that's the purpose of the JET Data Manager. Then we moved from the JET Data Manager to what was called the staging database. And it is the staging database the responsibility of the staging database is to bring all that data that now would have been selected and um, some amount of data cleansing which would have been performed on the at the at the data manager level for the data source and then in placing this data in the staging database um, you can now create tables create additional tables i remember in our example um, the last time we were we met, we looked at, for instance, your ability to create custom tables, because it's very possible that you might have data or you might need to include data um, in your project, which might not be available in your standard production environment. So is there some mechanism or is there some means by which you're able to import or input this data? And we showed where this could be done at the staging database level, where you were able to open or create new tables and apply the data accordingly. We also showed at the staging database level, where you were able to also create what is called date tables. Now, with most business analytics, over 90% of, of of business analytics is temporal in nature, meaning that it's based on time, whether it is a time series, um, therefore time, um, analyzing data over a series or, or over a time frame, or whether if it's specific, some specific um, constant date um, 
in, in hand. So that is done at the staging database. And then we moved the last time now to introducing what was called the Jet Data Warehouse, which is where we're gonna actually be spending a little bit more time today. Because in the Jet Data Warehouse, this is where we now create our cubes. And from our cubes, you'd have like your data mats, et cetera. And then from the cubes, we now publish your, your data. By publishing your cubes, your cubes would have what is called fact tables, F-A-C-T, fact tables. As the name would suggest, these are tables of facts, facts which are necessary for you to therefore create measures against the facts. So what is a measure? A measure is some aggregate, some aggregation function that is done against fields within the fact table. And we defined um, some aggregate functions, which included, for instance, summation, um, subtraction, um, division, multiplication. Um, but there are also other, um, other measures which include things like standard deviation, minimum, maximum, first, last, average, um, counting, distinct count, etc. And you'll notice these are all numeric in nature. So therefore, there's the expectation that a measure is going to be, it's, it's going to have some numeric result. And from these measures, you are able to apply what is called a dimension. And in going through, we recognize that a dimension provided some perspective, some perspective which allowed you to look on these measures. So we said that, um, you know, you know the adage where a glass is half empty, so if, or it's half, half full. So it all depends from what perspective you look at the data. So some people might say this is a half empty glass. Some might say this is a half full glass. So, and depending on how you interpret it, you may come up with, um, yes, the even different results, or maybe even you'd be expecting that if, if conclusions were, were slightly different, but you'd be able to explain it. So that's the idea of using dimensions. So hitting a little closer home, you might be able to analyze sales, but you might be able to analyze sales from the dimension or the perspective of the salesperson. Or you might be able to analyze the same sales data from the dimension or the perspective of the sales region. Or you might analyze the same data from the dimension or the perspective of country. So there are many different ways that you could now apply your dimension, which gives the perspective, against your measures, good, which is the aggregate of your fields for your fact tables. So we're going to be spending some more time here between the Jet Analysis Services, which is the service which is responsible for your cubes, and as well as the publishing of your cubes to be used um, by your, um, your end user tools like Excel, etc. So I am going to quickly Good. I'm anticipating that we are still um, seeing. Let me just position this here a little. So here I have the icon for my Jet Data Manager. So this is a tool, as we said, that's given to you um, by the Jet. And it is a Jet Data Manager service that opens and opens your project. And it is a Jet Data Manager that allows you to download the projects, as we said. So here I'm going to open one of the projects that we've been using for our webinars. And it's always good um, over time for you to check the Cube Store because Jet is always responding to the requests and the needs of, of, um, of the client. So there are times that the client might be asking for additional reports, additional functionality, etc. So you'll find that they're always updating the cubes. So it is always good for you to go to file and cube store. And on the cube store, you would see the cubes 
or, or you'll see the projects rather to which you are licensed for. And you'd, all you'd have to do is just to check the version. And if you find that there's an upgrade, you can easily either upgrade your current project or actually install um, a new project. So here we are in our project. And we said that when you open a project, you're actually here at the Solution Explorer as we're seeing here. And the Solution Explorer has many nodes. And the first node that we started on, we looked at the business unit node. We're in the business unit load. This is where you therefore define your staging database. We went through the data sources where in you looking at your data sources, you could use any of the standard connectors um, that are provided to you by JET. And the standard um, connectors are listed under what is called an adapter data source. So here you can see that you are given five standard data adapters, meaning if your project was either D365 Business Central or GP or AX, um, you would use these accordingly. So for instance, AD to, to add the Dynamics Nav adapter, this is the adapter for Business Central, right? 365 Business Central. If you're using the AX environment, this is the adapter that you would use, or if you're using GP in your environment, then you would add the Dynamics GP adapter. And once you click on these adapters for your respective environments, it would carry you through um, a series of steps using a wizard where um, those steps allow you to identify the databases within your environment. So you'd add the various credentials, et cetera, and you'd connect to your, um, to your environment. And in connecting to your environment, what you would see is the actual project um, that you are subscribed to already built and ready for you to use. It's just a matter of you compiling and deploying. But if, however, you wanted to add other third-party databases or other SQL databases, rather than using the adapter data source, you just use a data source, the regular data source um, context sensitive menu. And here you see all the various types of data sources that you can connect to good, but we used the standard GP. And then we identified that when you select your various databases, this is a standard project, right? So we went through all of this to show that in, in selecting your tables, um, these are now listed here under the tables node for the staging database. So this is a staging database and it's important for us again to reiterate the following. The JET Analytics application does not write to your underlying database. It does not update your database. It does not write to your database. It does not edit any, any of your data. It is simply used for reading data. So therefore, whatever credentials that you apply or you supply to these various connections, um, all it needs is access to your database environment with the credentials that allows it to just read data from your database. And this database here is called, is, it's, it's, this is the node for your staging database. Therefore, confirming the following. One, at no time is your data or is the data in Jet Analytics written to your database, but instead it is written to a separate database. So as it reads from your production environment, it, write, it writes to its own database. Now, why is this beneficial for you? This allows you to therefore create your own staging database, maybe in a separate environment. So by you being able to create your database in a se separate environment, separate from your production environment, you'll find that there you won't be, 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 be utilizing a lot of the resources that is set aside for your production environment. So this is important to underscore. We then move from the business unit 
to now look at the data warehouse. And we said the database warehouse, database warehouse is now where all the action is. So I'm now quickly going to close the screen a little, move over the business unit. So the JET database or the, or the JET um, data warehouse, let me say a quick note on this. <laughs> The data warehouse uses now what is called um, SQL's analytical services. So your regular production database environment uses the standard um, database engine. Good. But in order to allow you to present data in a cube form or to create cubes and dimensions, etc you have to use what is called the analysis services. So you would have to enable analysis services in your environment. And in your analysis services, that database stores all the cubes and tables and views, et cetera, which are necessary for um, your, 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 the building of your project. In addition to the data warehouse, you have what is called OLAP. OLAP is an acronym for Online Analytical Processing. And between the data warehouse and your OLAP, this is where all the action is. And under the OLAP environment, you would have seen here some, some, some nodes, and we're going to be going through again these, these um, nodes today. Here, there's a node which defines the cubes. So what are the cubes? A cube represents the, the subset of data from your entire data set. And that subset of data is your data of interest. Good. So here you can see from the standard project that there are six cubes. Good. And these cubes tend to relate to the function, the business function that is being carried out. So here you will see data relating to finance inside the finance cube. Anything relating to the inventory cube, you will see um, data relating only to inventory. And what benefit does this bring? It allows you to assign only specific users to specific cubes. So therefore, you might want to assign your sales agents to your sales cube only. And by, by applying the requisite security to the sales cube, you'll only allow salespersons to see the sales cube. And therefore, it means that salespersons will not be able to see data which is probably in finance because it's really of no import. It's of no importance to them. So if we open one of the cubes, so here I've highlighted the finance cube and I've opened the finance cube under the finance cube node, <clears throat> there are three other nodes, two of which are very important for you. One is called measures and the other called dimensions. Earlier we spoke about measures where we said the measures show the aggregate functions which are applied against your fact tables. So we are seeing measures, we are seeing dimensions, but how do we identify fact tables? In other words, those tables with all the factual information that is necessary for this finance cube. And we're able to do this by highlighting the particular cube in question. And in this regard, it's a finance cube. We right click the finance cube. And if I right click the finance cube and I now see the context sensitive or context, yes, context sensitive menu. I am seeing here 
an option which says edit cube. When I select edit cube, I'm actually seeing a list of all the tables. So the question is, where did this list come from? And this is the answer, let me cancel. Listed under the finance cubes as with any cubes would be the tables that are under the jet data warehouse. Good. So it's a representation of all the tables that are coming from the data warehouse. So let's, let's, just, let's just calmly take it. You first start with your data in your data source. You bring your data from your data source to the staging database. You then move tables which are in the staging database to the data warehouse. And then from the data warehouse, you select the tables which are necessary for your cubes. So that's the progression. So if I highlight again the, um, the finance cube and then select edit cube, I'm seeing here a listing of all my tables which can be found in the Jet GP data warehouse. Good. However, you will notice that I have three tables with a check mark beside it. So what do the check marks signify? The check marks signify that out of my entire list of tables, which are in my data warehouse, for me to build my finance cube, I only need these three tables the financial budget transactions, the financial period balances table, and the financial transactions table. If, however, I needed other tables, then I could check it accordingly. But for the finance table, I only need these three tables. And these three tables which have been selected, these three tables are now termed fact tables. So these are the tables which have been selected. So a fact table is a table that has been selected from a data warehouse data set. And these tables will be used to calculate my measures. So that's the key thing to remember about a fact table, F-A-C-T. So I'm saying that these are the three tables right, to which I will be using to extract my factual information by way of measures. Good. So I hope um, that is clear. So now that I have my three tables selected and called fact tables, you will notice now that I'm able to create measures. I'm going to just bring up the spacing a little bit more. So measures are aggregate functions which have been applied against tables. Now the fact table. So if you if I just bring this across, so look at this. I am able when I right-click measures to determine or to calculate three types of measures. One which is called a standard measure, the other which is called a derived measure, and the other which is called a calculated measure. Good. Now, for today's session, we'll only be looking at standard measures. So a standard measure is really a standard aggregation that is being done um, against a particular field. Good. So here are the various measures that have been calculated. And to get an idea of what um, these measures look like, I can right click one of these already built measures. And then in the context sensitive help, I'm seeing edit the business function measure. So if I click, there it is. So I'm seeing here 
that I have created or what has been created for us is a measure called beginning balance. And the beginning balance uses the financial transactions fact table. If I were to click the drop down, you'll notice that there are only three tables listed. These are the three tables that I had put the checkbox. You remember when we had the checkbox earlier when I edited the table and I showed you from the list of tables coming from the data warehouse, we selected three tables and those three tables are our fact tables because it is from the fact tables that you'll be using to create your measure. Good. So what is listed here would have been the three fact tables, the financial budget transactions fact table, the financial period, and the financial transactions. So what is this saying to us? That this particular formula or this measure, which is called beginning balance, it will be formatted using the hashtag dot hashtag hashtag, which simply means that it's going to be formatted in numeric format. It's going to be displayed in numeric format, good, almost similar to dollars and cents. We have a checkbox here which says visible. And what does this mean? It's very possible that you might be calculating a measure to be used in another measure. So a measure that you want to use in the calculation of another measure, you may not necessarily want that measure to be visible to the end user. So by you ch checking this text box, you're actually saying that this measure, which is called the beginning balance, is going to be visible right, to the end user who will be using their presentation tool, whether if it's Excel, Power BI, et cetera. Good. And the other thing which is important is that we're saying that as far as the calculation of this formula, which is for our measure, it is going to be using A minus B. And what does A minus B stand for? Well, we have defined what A and B, which means that we'll be using the ending balance, good, as well as the net change. So ending balance minus net change will be equal to the beginning balance. And this is how you calculate your various formulas. So if I were to check here, <clears throat> you would see a listing of all the various fields good, that are found within the financial transactions table. So this is what this particular measure does. It looks at the ending balance and then takes from the ending balance the net change. And that by logic makes sense. The ending balance minus the net change would give us the beginning balance. So this is one example of a, a measure, but of a particular measure, which is called the standard measure. If I right click measures as well, here you can see the particular measures that are available to you. So now that we have an idea of the measures, we are saying that these are the various aggregates. So budget variance, budget to date, credit amount, debit amount, et cetera. Good. So if we look at, let me just quickly look at one, which says the calculation of the credit amount. So if I right click and I say, edit the standard measure, um, here I'm seeing that this is saying to me that the credit measure is just simply good the financial transactions table, which is visible, and I'm using the field called credit amount. And what are we gonna be doing with the credit amount field? We're gonna be summing the credit amount. If I should click on the drop down for type, you'll see the various aggregate functions, which, is av which are available to you. So here find you can sum the field, you can count the field, you can find the minimum value in the field of data, the maximum value, what is called the distinct count. Uh, well, you know, the, the, the concept of children and parent will be outside. 
the 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 parameters of of this webinar but this is just a listing of all the various um aggregate formulas or aggregate functions that you can use good so now that we know the measures we need to look at this other node which is called the dimension good? So again, we said that a dimension provides some perspective of our data. And the best way to explain this is just to literally just speak it by way of an example. Um, you're able to see all these measures from the perspective of its status, whether the transaction is void or not. So, it's very possible you're able to, to do an analysis where you say, show me all my voided transactions. So the void dimension allows you to analyze all of your measures or any of your measures from the viewpoint or the perspective of whether the transaction is void or not. Also, there is a dimension here, which is called transaction date. So therefore, you are able to see any of your measures from the perspective of the transaction date, using that as an example. So you may ask then, how do you connect or how do you apply your dimension against your tables with the measures? And that's a good question. And here it's how it's done. Let us use the transaction date dimension. If I should right click and the context sensitive menu comes up, you'll notice that there's a node here which is called the dimension relations. So what you're saying here from this submenu is that this is where you are able to relate your various dimensions to either all your fact tables. And remember we said that the fact table are those tables which have been selected from your data warehouse. And we only selected three fact tables for the finance cube. So you can either set a relationship against all the fact tables, or you might choose to set a relationship between your dimensions and only one table. So I'm going to select all fact tables. And in selecting all fact tables, this is the screen that now is shown. So let's interpret the screen. What we're saying here is that you're going to be using the table to relate the dimension against any of these three um, fact tables. And the key field that matches or that maps your dimension table to your three fact tables is the date field or the date column. That's your key column the column that uniquely identifies every record um, within your transaction date um, dimension table. So if I were to look in the transaction dimension date table, I would actually see this key column, which is called date. And what we're saying here is that the date column in the transaction date dimension table is mapped to the financial transactions fact table by way of the transaction date. So this is the field that is now used. It's not the company field, not the account index, not the series, not document number, not credit amount, debit amount, but actually the transaction date. So this is how the two tables are mapped. So inside the financial transactions table would be a listing of 
all the fields in the tra financial transactions table. And we're saying that we're mapping the date column from the date table to the transaction date field. If you notice the financial transactions table as against the financial budget transactions table, when you click to get the list of fields, the list of fields might be different. So on the financial budget transactions table, you will notice that the date field in this table is called the period date table. Unlike in the financial transactions table, the date field was called transaction date. However, what we're saying here is that you will map date in the transaction date dimension table to period date within the financial budget transaction table. And the third fact table, which is a financial period balances table, if you should click, you now get the fields which relate to the financial period table. And we're saying that to map the date field in the transaction date dimension table, you will use the period end date in order to map. So therefore, by you creating the mapping between your dimension table, which is here, to your three um, fact tables, and then selecting the fields by which the mapping can exist. It therefore means that if you were to select a particular month in question or a particular date range or a particular quarter or a particular year, because there's a mapping between the date field in the transaction date table and these various date fields for these respective um, fact tables, then you are able to properly conduct an analysis of your transactions using date. So do you want to continue and just click OK? So I want you to take in a picture in your mind's eye the listing of these dimensions which have been applied against finance. If I should probably go down to the sales cube, right? And just follow the same principle. If I right click the sales cube and in my context sensitive, I select edit the cube. You'll notice now that I have different tables from my entire list of tables in my data warehouse that I've selected. So here I've now, for my sales cube, I have now selected five different tables for my fact tables, unlike my finance cube, which allow me to select um, finance related tables. I'm now only selecting for my sales cube, sales related tables. So therefore my sales agents will only see sales related tables. So here I now have five fact tables which have been selected. And against my fact tables, I'm now seeing the various measures that, I, that have already been computed good, against my fact table, the various fact tables. And for the measures, I have here dimensions. So the question now is this, how do you create dimensions? Now that we have looked on the cubes um, node, there is a node which is called dimensions. And under the dimensions node are a list of sub nodes which represent the various, um, the various perspectives which have been created. So it is very possible that these dimensions can be reused good, in any of these cubes which are up here. So for instance, 
if I should choose and look at the date cube and open the date, the, the day node, date node, I'm seeing the various fields which have been selected good, for my date cube. And as such, I'll be able to reuse or to use these um, fields against my data. So let's look at these. You'll notice the fields day, year, month, month, year, quarter, quarter, year. If I should go back to my finance and look at the date, because even though it says transaction date dimension, it is actually using the very date dimension, which is down here. And if I should go back again and say dimension relations and look at the fat cubes, you'll notice what's listed here, day, year, month, month, year, quarter, quarter, year. I'll say it again, day, year, month, month, year, quarter, quarter, year. Six different perspectives. And again, if I should now go into the dimensions itself, there they are, day, year, month, month, year, quarter, quarter, year. So you can actually create your dimensions. And in the next session, we will look at how do you create dimensions. But what I'm going to do is to show you your end product. So remember, in the next session, we'll be looking at creating all these dimensions and applying the dimensions to the fact table. If you want to know um, just what your queue will look like good, before you publish it to end users, because you might want to do some checking of your data to test to see if everything is OK. Are there any issues with the data? Will it format the data properly? One of the things you can do is to basically preview what your data will look like. So if I open the cubes and let's look at one of the cubes, let's, yeah, let's use a sales cube because it might come with more data, which is familiar for you. I could right click the sales cube. Good. Um, and in right clicking, I'm seeing in context sensitive menu, an option which says browse the cube. So I'm able to browse the cube to look at the data before I actually publish it to my end users because I want to make sure that there is no data which might be erroneous or incorrect. So it's always good to browse the cube. So if I select browse cube, good, I'm now coming up with a window which says cube browser and I'm gonna open it some more. Good. So let's look at what we're seeing here. You'll notice that here it says sales and it has the icon of a cube. I'm gonna just bring this over a little so that we can match it. Let's see how best we can match it. Good. So here is our sales cube. So you remember our sales cube from within our Jet Data Manager. So I'm now browsing my cube. And here I'm seeing the icon which says cubes, which says sales. And it's a, it's a cube. And the particular name of the cube is sales. Now, if I should click measures here in my development area, I'm seeing a list of all my measures which were created. Likewise, here, if I were to open my measures, I will actually see the same list of measures which were created within my environment. Good. And also, here you'll notice build to address, company, customer. These now are my dimensions. Good. So here you are, build to address. It's just that it's sorted in alphabetical order here. So here it is, build to address. Here it is as well, build to address. Um, then you have company. Here it is here, company. So it's listed here, company. This list is in alphabetical order. 
The next, we have another dimension called customer. So here's that dimension customer. And if I were to open the customer node, I'm seeing all the fields which have been created for the dimension. So this is just to show you that um, there's a mapping, there's a relationship. So as you browse the cube, good, this is what you'll be presented with. And this will actually mimic what is available to you in your end user tool. So if I were to scroll and look at the measures, I could say, okay, what particular measure would I want to be probably analyzing? So maybe I would like to look at my sales transactions and probably look at the amount of profit that I have been earning. And remember, profit is simply um, cost from sales, or in other words, revenue minus cost. So profit would have been a calculated measure. Good. Profit would have been a calculated measure because here it is under the measures node. So in scrolling back down, I'm saying I would like to look at profit. So where in my quadrants would I put profit? I would put profit because it's a measure, a calculated measure within my fourth quadrant here, which is the measures quadrant. So if I click hold and drag, so I left click, hold and drag and place it within the measures. So you'll notice now my, 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 my palette now begins to take shape because here it has brought and highlighted that I've now added profit as a measure. So what is this 1,176,542 all about? Simple. It is the calculated measure of all profit. Good. It's the calculated measure of all profit. So really, there, there are really no perspectives as yet. Good. So all we know that our total profit is 1,176,542. But what if we now wanted to apply perspectives? The beauty of the jet analytics, and again, if you remember the Rubik's Cube, just as we said with the glass half empty, half full, you are able to provide many different perspectives. Now, what if one of the perspectives that I would like to use, so here I would now close measures and I now come down to my my um my my dimensions i could say for the document date or maybe a date calculation let's see something that could be interesting here i could probably use this hierarchy where i'm seeing here year quarter month and day so we have a dimension which is based on the date, but it's what is called a hierarchical dimension. And its hierarchy is based on the year. Then you can drill down to the quarter. Then within each quarter, you can drill down to the month. And then within each month, you can drill down into the day. So this is what is called a hierarchical dimension. And in our next session, I'll be showing you how to um, use hierarchical and create hierarchical dimensions. So I could click and hold this date YQMD, which is year, quarter, month date. So I'm clicking and holding, and I'm going to be dragging it and put it down in my rows. So this will provide me now one perspective, which is my date. So I'm still here in the 1.176542, but I can now expand my date node. And in expanding my date node, Good. I'm now getting, okay, all the dates, but I can continue to expand. Let me just do this. Um, I might be having an issue with my dates. 
okay, maybe the dates might be out of out of context. All right, let me track this down. And instead, let me use another another um, perspective. Maybe I could look at location. Yes, I'm sure we did see. Uh, so let's look at location. I'm going to use location as one of my perspectives. So let's see if this. Oh. Hmm. There's no data here as well from the perspective. Now I know we should be having some data. Let me see if I could probably use another because it might just mean that I might need to um, recompile. Just give me one minute. Let me do this. I'm going to just recreate my cubes. Just give me one minute. Let me see. All right, but I think you have the idea. Let me just quickly just run the cubes. So I'm just doing an update here. Let me just take a minute. Good. Click OK. I'm just rebuilding the cubes because it could be that my data just needs to be rebuilt. Right. So again, as we're saying, for us browsing the cubes, you should be able to see your data from the various perspectives. So as we just give it a second for it to recompile again, let us see what's happening here. Also in the next session, we will go through exactly what is the deploy and execute and how is it used. Um, in effect, you run the deploy and execute after you have built your project and you now want it to be properly deployed in your analytical services so that it can be viewed um, by end users. So let's just give this a second for it to end. And um, I should be able to see our data as we browse the cube. Um, so let's give it a few. So as we just quickly recap, because I know that the, the time is ending. Um, so what we want to do here now, know that we have been building our cubes and um, selected our fact tables. And um, we have also looked at our dimensions and applied our dimensions. The, the next step is to see how we can now view, view um, that data um, in, in, from the perspective of your dimension. So let's just give this just a minute. Um, 89, 91%. All right, it should be finished. Again, just give us a second. Let's just quickly get this done. It to 100. So our cube is done. So let's look again and see. So if we browse our cube, and again, if we look at our measures and we see, okay, what measure do we want to look at? Or well, let me just expand this quickly. And I said we wanted to probably look at, is it sales transactions? All right, let's use a different cube, cost. Bring this down as a measure, 1073. And then maybe we want to analyze our cost um, based on location. Uh, maybe you want to look at it by way of country and state and city. Let's see all locations. Beautiful. So we're seeing data now here by USA, Illinois, etc. So we're now able to look at it from pers the perspective of the location. But what if I also wanted another perspective, which was by way of my sales agents, maybe the salespersons. So I can scroll and I will see here I have salespersons by territory. So I could probably click and look at it from 
the perspective of columns as well. So I'm able to see my data um, by salesperson. So I'm now seeing my data from not only the perspective of locations as you're seeing here, but also by way of salesperson. So that is the idea. So the next time we meet, definitely we'll be um, diving into some more. All I needed to have done was just to recompile. And sometimes this happens because many times when you're doing examples and you're creating and you're changing structures, sometimes you need to, um, to rebuild your cube. So I know that we have gone over time, but I really thank you all for, for staying. Again, I know that you could have been elsewhere, but you chose to stay with us. So remember the next time we're gonna be looking now more on dimensions and we'll be now looking at the end user tools themselves. That is whether if you're using Excel or if you're gonna be using Power BI or any other front facing tool to present your data. I just quickly like to tell everybody, thanks for coming. Um, and there are a lot of names that I know here, Naphtali, um, Omar, Otis, really appreciate you being here because I know you guys are busy, but you have decided to spend the time with us. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it. So until next time, um, God bless and have a great week. Thank you.